computer science. Now buckle up as we leap inside the black box. The SAT is a billion dollar industry. For the past half century, the SAT has been a part of the application to almost all selective colleges and universities in the US. It has always been controversial and recently the movement to topple the SAT has gained steam as a number of colleges such as the University of Chicago and the University of Rochester has decided to make the SAT requirement optional. The Wolves are now knocking at the gates of the University of California. This is a huge deal because the UC system is both enormous and prestigious. All campuses combined, the UC system receives over 200,000 undergraduate applicants each year. As a side note, many applicants apply to multiple campuses and many applicants take the SAT multiple times. So we're talking about big business here. In this video, I'll discuss both sides of this controversy, what each side's key arguments are, and how we should think about their merits. Those who want to keep the SAT argue that while it is imperfect, it is an objective measure for comparing college applicants. I think that's a reasonable point, but only if they substitute the word objective with standardized. The SAT is supposed to measure aptitude, but aptitude itself is not well defined. Should it measure past success or future success? Should it measure success at school or success in life? Or should it measure the ability to learn? It is impossible to create a purely objective measure of something that cannot even be objectively defined. What the SAT provides is a standard way of comparing students from different high schools. Most other metrics do not work as well. Take high school GPA, for example. Even if two high schools use the same 0 to 4 grading scale, school X might give A's to 90% of its students, while school Y gives A's to only 30%. In that case, the having a 3.6 from school Y means more than having the same 3.6 from school X. But if X were a top ranked school, then our perspective changes again. This is why we need standardization. Opponents of the SAT point to studies that show that the test is systematically biased against certain subgroups of the population, such as African Americans and women. They argue that the existence of bias proves that the SAT is subjective. Opponents ignore the vast amount of research that have gone into reducing and identifying biases uh, in standardized testing. I cover a lot of this material in chapter five of Numbers Rule Your World, and it's a great application of practical data science. Here's an example of a test item for which the ETS, the company behind the SAT, has quantified its bias. Take a look at this item for a few seconds and try to figure out if this test item is biased and if so, against which subgroup. You probably had a hard time figuring this out and you would not be alone. I chose this item to convince you that the problem of identifying bias in test items is a lot more complex than the critics make it out to be. The only way researchers can quantify this bias is if they expose the same test item to test takers from different subgroups and then compare the differential correct rates and after they control for the test takers difference in ability. In our example, the correct answer is choice C. Money is to wallet, as arrow is to quiver. It turns out that there's no difference in correct rates between different racial groups. However, the correct rate for female test takers was 20% below that of male test takers. 
That's a shocking level of bias against women. The trouble here is how difficult it is to predict the existence of such bias. And even after it's known, it's really hard to explain its origin. If we were to get rid of the SAT requirement, what will we replace it with? Most other components of the application process, such as uh, high school GPAs, letters of references, and application essays are even more subjective. Do we really believe that writers of references and high school teachers do not exhibit any kind of bias? So there's an inconsistency in this line of reasoning. We knock down the SAT for being subjective, but replacing it with something even more subjective? Recall that the SAT is big business. The ETS makes over a billion dollars a year on this test alone. And there's a thriving coaching and tutoring industry feeding off of the SAT. If the ETS failed to protect this franchise, it creates an opening for a well-funded startup to fill in the void. There are already dozens of startups touting big data solutions to this type of problem. They build predictive models that will predict the success of employees or the loyalty of customers. And it is hardly a stretch to claim that they will build models that can predict the success of students. All these models will require large amounts of structured data to train. Where do we think such data is coming from? You guessed it, from more standardized testing. If you like this video, please help us build our channel by sharing it or hitting that subscribe button. See you next time inside the black box. Principal Analytics Prep. Prepping you for the data revolution.